going on? It's Dr. Gonzo Boogie here again, back for another DVD and VHS update. And it's been a couple weeks since my last video, so I'm glad to finally get another one of these up there. The last update I put up was at the end of December, so this is my first DVD and VHS update of 2015. And um, in the past two, three weeks that have been in between my last update, I picked up a lot of really cool stuff. I got some awesome tapes that I'll show you guys at the end, some horror stuff too. And um, I picked up a lot of really cool DVDs, mostly horror stuff, so I'm excited to show you guys what I bought, and I'm just going to get going, show you guys the DVDs first. And first off here we have Death Race 2000, starring David Carradine, and this is a Roger Corman production. And this is one of my favorite films um, that was released like under Roger Corman's name, just an all-out just fun movie. This came out in 1975 and, you know, stars David Carradine and um, Sylvester Stallone is also in this. And then it has a lot of uh, Roger Corman regulars in this movie also. Just really good stuff. This is a low-budget, cheesy movie like most of Roger Corman's movies, but just a ton of fun. Most mainstream movies won't have this much fun with a story like this because they just can't take risks like that with all the pressures from the big movie studios. So I always love low budget movies like this and this is one of my favorites just uh great i just rewatched this recently and um this is probably one of my favorite movies right now just an just an all out just fun movie if, if you've never seen this before it's kind of takes place in the future and it's about this uh big race that goes on it's like a huge televised event it's like the biggest sporting event of that of this time that this movie's around and um, it's just about this giant race, and you could uh, kill pedestrians and do all this stuff like that, and you get points for doing it. It's just very fictitious, very over the top. But there's a lot of social commentary in this movie, too. And um, it's just, like I said before, just a fun movie. I would highly recommend Death Race 2000. Just a great movie. Next up is Dario Argento's Deep Red. And I actually have this on a Anchor Bay 2 pack but I've been wanting to get it separate for a while now. This is the Anchor Bay edition of course. And just a great movie, great giallo classic Argeno right here. It's got a really good soundtrack by Goblin. Some of my favorite music from them is in this movie. And um, I would just say this is one of Argeno's best. Just a really well written story. Great visuals. Just everything you would expect from Argeno. Just a great DVD here, great movie too. Came with an awesome little insert thing, and you know, Anchor Bay always does a great job with the Argeno collection, so just excited to get this one. Next up, I have a couple more Anchor Bays, and these ones also, I used to have a two pack that came with both of these, and it's Hellraiser 1 and 2. I used to have an Anchor Bay two pack that had both of these, it was just in like a slim case, and it came with both the discs and both the inserts, so it was a nice little two-pack, but for a while I've been wanting to update and buy them both separate, so I actually um, got this one at FYE. They had a deal, buy two, get one for like a dollar or something like that. I can't remember. It might have been buy one, get one for a dollar, but I got this for a dollar, so that was really good. And then this I bought at a DVD video game store that um, is next to me called Game Exchange. And um, I traded in some stuff, so I got this one for free. So all together, I only paid like a dollar for both of these, and I ended up trading or selling my other edition, the two-pack, so I made a little bit of money off, off of it too. So it's really cool. I like to do stuff like that sometimes. And uh, these are nice Anchor Bay editions of both of these movies. They both have awesome inserts. The Hellraiser 1. And then the one for Hellraiser 2. And these are probably my two favorite out of the Hellraiser series, but now I basically have the whole series, so I'm looking forward to checking out the other sequels again, too. And next up is actually another Hellraiser movie. This is Hellworld, and this was the last Hellraiser movie that I needed for my collection. There's one that just came out recently. I think Hellraiser Revelations. I can't remember the name. But it doesn't have Doug Bradley in it, so I'm I'm actually not sure if I plan to pick that one up or not. If anybody would recommend it, you know, leave a comment or something like that. But this is the one that I wanted to end off with, basically. 
And um, <clears throat> when I think about it, I actually think this might have been the first Hellraiser movie I've ever seen. Because I remember back in high school, my friend Joel used to have this on DVD. And this was early on when we first both started to get into like, horror movies and buy memorabilia, like figures and other stuff like that. And um, also when we first started to buy DVDs, because I remember me and him were still buying tapes for the longest time. And um, I remember him having this movie, and uh, me and him watched it, and I can't, I don't have any memories of watching a Hellraiser movie before that. So this is probably the first Hellraiser movie I've ever seen. I actually don't remember anything from it. But for that reason alone, I'm actually really looking forward to checking this one out. I plan to do a Hellraiser marathon soon and watch the whole series, so really looking forward to this. I know this probably isn't that good of a sequel, but just for the reason that it might that it was the first one that I've ever seen, I'm definitely excited to watch this one again. Hellraiser Hell World. Next up is Pumpkinhead, the collector's edition. I actually found this one at Stop and Shop. I saw that they had a bunch of DVDs for $3.99, so I was flipping through what they had. They actually had a couple interesting titles in there. I might have to go back and pick up a couple more. But they had one copy of Pumpkinhead there, so I picked this one up. And um, it's been a while since I've seen this. I just recently rewatched this, and this is a pretty good late 80s horror movie. A guy's um, son gets killed by some punk teenagers, and he goes to a witch um, who resurrects a like demon monster pumpkin head to take revenge on these teenagers who killed his son. Just a pretty good story. It's got Lance Harrickson in it. He's a great actor, and um, you know, it's pretty good pumpkin head. Pretty good stuff there. Next up is the classic Wolfman, starring Lon Chaney Jr. And um, I bought this because I'm actually trying to get all the Universal Monster movies in these editions. They, Universal put out um, the first films in the series. Like they put out Frankenstein, Little Wolfman, Invisible Man. And then they put out all the sequels in two packs. So I'm actually trying to buy all these right now. All the two pack sequels and all the separate editions of the uh, first ones. And uh, so far I have three. I also have... Dracula and Creature, so this makes my third one. I have some of the two packs also, so definitely a goal to eventually get all these. I know there's a box set too, but I'm trying to pick these up cheap because the other two I found at FYE for like five bucks each, and this one they had at FYE for like six ninety nine. So I've been picking these up when I see them cheap, but this is really cool. I mean, the classic Wolfman movie is just you know an example of one of the best classic monster movies from the forties. Just great stuff. I love the Universal Monsters. Ever since I was a little kid, they've been some of my favorite things in the world. So, you know, this is a movie if you've never seen, I would highly, highly recommend it. This has Bela Lugosi in it, and it also has um, Claude Rains in it. So just some classic Universal uh, Monster actors, too. And um, just a great film right here. Next up is... Kingdom of the Spiders with William Shatner. And I've actually um, haven't went, been wanting to buy this on DVD because I hate spiders. I have like a huge phobia of spiders. It doesn't matter what size they are, they just freak me out. The bigger they are, of course, the creepier. But so when this movie uses all real spiders, from what I remember, no fake prosthetic spiders at all or little effect spiders. These are all real spiders, and a lot of spiders got murdered. In the making of this movie, there's scenes with like hundreds of spiders getting burnt and stomped on. Just um, so for someone who hates spiders, that's a cool thing, you know, to see some spiders get killed. But this is a really cool DVD here. I was actually really glad to come across this. I found this at the Game Exchange store that I talk about sometimes in my videos, and um, I got this for pretty cheap. I think it was only like three, four dollars. And um, William Shatner's the man one of the main reasons I wanted to buy this and of course just because it's kind of like a cult horror movie but this is the um, 25th anniversary edition from uh, Good Times Entertainment I've actually never seen this DVD before usually the, I see the newer release that is around and um, I tried to look this up on Amazon to see how much it goes for and I couldn't even find it so you know I'm guessing this is a little bit hard to come by but since it's a Good Times DVD it's probably not that expensive it's still cool. 
eventually I will watch this, but I'll have to um, put my fear of spiders behind me and just try to have some fun with it. All right, next up is this uh, random two pack. I actually got this for free at Game Exchange because they have a deal there. You buy two DVDs, you get one for free. So I was able to get this for free. And it's just a really cheap two pack here. And it comes with two late 80s slasher movies that I've never seen or heard of. This one is called Terror at 10 Killer, which I have no idea what that's about. And then this one here is called The Last Slumber Party, which is the main reason I picked up this pack, because uh, it might be hard to see with the glare right here, but the poster, or the picture they show for The Last Slumber Party just looks classic. I love the uh, blue-pink tint of the lighting on it, just, just great. Just uh, grabbed my attention instantly, and I figured for free, why not check these out? And, um... I read some reviews on these movies on the computer, and the Terror at 10 Killer, I've heard is just a boring ass slasher movie, just goes on forever and never does anything. But I've heard that The Last Slumber Party is actually a pretty fun movie, if you like movies that are so bad they're good, so I'm looking forward to checking that one out, which is the main reason I bought this pack anyways. That one came out in 88, and the Terror at 10 Killer came out in 86, so these are just kind of obscure little slasher movies that you know if I saw these on VHS I would definitely pick up because they probably come in awesome big box cases so you know I figured out I figured why not get the DVD for these all right next up I actually picked up Species and Species 2 which um, I remember seeing the first Species film on the sci-fi channel when I was in high school and I, I remember I used to like it kind of another you know, alien sort of slasher movie where like an alien creature was going around killing people. So it's like a sci-fi slasher movie, which I'm a big fan of movies like that. Alien is one of my favorite movies ever. But it's just a pretty fun movie. It's got um, some hot alien girl in it. And uh, Michael Madison is in this, um, doing his best performance as Michael Madison like he does in all his movies. But the coolest thing about this is the alien creature, which there's not a good picture of on this DVD. It's played by her, but it's like an actual, she like turns into an actual alien creature if you've never seen this. Um, was designed by H.R. Geiger, who also designed the creature in Alien, and I'm a fan of H.R. Geiger's artwork and stuff, so I thought that was pretty cool, which is one of the main reasons I actually picked this one up. But, um, I watched both of these recently, and, um, they're, you know, really fun movies. I would recommend these if you like cheesy sci-fi horror movies. And the second one, too, I thought was pretty good, which um, I actually, in a way, um, you know, almost like the second one a little bit more. Um, I'm not sure why exactly, but I liked how the cast from, like, the main characters from the first one returned, so it feels like a good sequel. And um, I also like how they um, uh, had better effects in this one. Um, the first one had a lot of, like, real shitty mid 90s computer effects you know it looked like the um the videos in like a playstation one game and this one actually used real effects and um it just looked better in my opinion the create the alien creature looked cooler in this movie and um I, I just also thought this was a really fun movie too so would also recommend checking out species 2 i've actually never seen any of the other ones in the series but the first two are pretty good nothing great but just fun to watch and then I also picked up the two disc editions of Predator 1 and Predator 2. And uh, I actually had uh, some problems with this one. The case that holds the disc in, it's in one of these um, like cardboard cases, which I'm not the biggest fan of. It's kind of like falling off the cardboard. It's like a plastic piece glued to it. So um, I actually plan to try to rebuy this one because I... I don't like having like DVDs that are like broken or anything like that, but um, I love Predator, one of my favorite science fiction movies ever. Arnold Schwarzenegger, awesome. Rest of the cast, awesome. And the Alien Predator, just great. One of the coolest alien monsters ever. And it's just a classic movie. And um, I also picked up Predator 2 with a two disc edition, which I actually like this edition more. I, you know, I like the first Predator movie more than the second, but I like this edition more it comes in a regular DVD case not a cardboard thing and um, I just think this is a nice looking two disc set it's got um, you know the inserts the disc I love the red and black coloring on this 
and um, it just looks nice. I was um, this was actually the main reason I picked both of these up. I saw this at Fye used for 4.99, so I um, bought this, and I figured why not pick the first one up two disc anyways. I actually used to own both of these, the regular editions, but when I bought these, I traded my other copies in. But like I said, I need to rebuy the two disc of Predator because the case that it came in was kind of broken. But other than that, great movies. I love Predator 2 also. Just a really good sequel. And then last here for the DVDs is... I got this one at Game Exchange also for real cheap. And this is Crazy Streets. And I bought this because it's a movie that has Debbie Harry in it. And I'm a huge Debbie Harry Blondie fan. If you've seen my videos, you've definitely heard me talk about her before. And um, I actually have this movie on a two-pack from the same company but you know I saw it at Game Exchange separate so I figured why not pick it up so I did a lot of that in the past two weeks I picked up a lot of DVDs that I used to have in two packs for some reason but this also stars Alec Baldwin who's the actual star in this Debbie Harry's role is more of like a side character from what I've read she's only in the movie for like 20 25 minutes if but um that's enough for me and uh, the cover of this is great great picture of Debbie Harry there but uh Kind of a stupid picture of Alec Baldwin. If you actually look closely, you probably can't tell from the the glare and all that. But like Alec Baldwin's head is like on like a fake CG body. It's like it's, it's kind of ridiculous. But other than that, it's a um, just a funny cover. But other than that, just I think it's an interesting film for Debbie Harry alone. I have not seen this yet, but I am looking forward to checking it out. And last year, I just have four. VHS tapes that I'm going to try to go through real quick. I picked up April Fool's Day on tape, which is awesome because I love this original cover art. My DVD is actually like the newer cover art design, which always makes me sad. We're really nice here. I was actually a little hesitant on picking this one up because it has a little bit of mold on the tape. I think you can see that there, that white mark on that tape but I'm going to check it out anyways and see if it still plays through good. I was actually at a Goodwill where I bought this and they had some of the Friday 13th uh, movies on VHS which I have the whole series on tape but I only have two of the original Paramount tapes um, the rest of mine are like re-releases from a little bit later on and they had the original Paramount releases of five and six there but the uh, mold damage was so bad on the tape kind of like this but basically the whole um, wheel of tape was just covered in white mold like you can smell the dampness on these tapes like someone definitely kept these in like a basement with some that had some like water damage a little bit but um picked it up anyways so hopefully this plays through i have it on dvd so if not you know i'll just toss it in the closet and um <clears throat> next up here is actually this really cool copy of manhunter which is the um the first Hannibal Lecter movie that came out in the 80s and this is actually my favorite out of all the Hannibal Lecter movies this is just a great badass movie got an awesome soundtrack and some really cool characters um, really well directed and well acted just a great movie Manhunter you can get an awesome Anchor Bay edition of this like a two disc but you can also get um, a single disc Anchor Bay too and just a really great movie highly recommend this but I loved how bright and colorful this uh, tape was like the side of it has this blue and orange look to it and blue and orange are two of my favorite colors and um, just everything about this case and packaging design was appealing to me so I love buying tapes like this so I was really excited to find this tape and <clears throat> then I picked up this movie The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and this actually stars Jeff Goldblum and I had never seen or heard of this I've like looked at Jeff Goldblum's filmography before and I never even noticed that he was in a Sleepy Hollow movie and because of the cover I thought maybe this was a cartoon so I took a chance on buying it I thought maybe Jeff Goldblum just did a voice in it but I got home and looked it up on the computer and it's actually a movie I think from either 79 or 1980 and it's just an adaption of the classic Sleepy Hollow story starring Jeff Goldblum so this sounds awesome I'm a big Jeff Goldblum fam, I think he does a great job in The Fly and some of the other movies I've seen him in. Just a fun guy and interesting actor too. But uh, really cool here, and I actually looked this one up, and this tape goes for a lot because this DVD, I, don't, I actually don't think there's a, a DVD for this movie. 
So this tape actually goes for a pretty good amount of money. I've seen it going from like 10 to $20, depending on the condition and all that. So really cool, because I picked this one up randomly at a thrift store for like a dollar. All right, and last for the update here, I found Alpha's Magical Christmas. This is a Power Rangers Christmas special. I actually wish I came across this around Christmas time, but I, I actually used to have this on DVD too, so it didn't really matter. I could have just watched it on DVD if I wanted, but this is a really cheesy Christmas special. It's basically um, Alpha, the Power Rangers like robot in their command center, has um, Zordon, which is the Power Rangers like leader, or whatever you would call it. Um, like bring a whole bunch of little kids to the command center, which is just a just a weird idea in the first place, but <laughs> it just adds to the cheesy and campiness of this special. And uh, so basically this whole special is you're just like watching Alpha walk around little kids as they do like arts and crafts. But I have to admit like even though the special is like horrible and really has nothing to do with the Power Rangers other than showing up at the last like minute and waving. And it's not even all the Power Rangers, it's just three of them. But it's three of the best Power Rangers so that's, you know, that's good enough right there. But um, just, um, this has a lot of nostalgic value to me for being as cheesy as it is. And it reminds me of being a little kid, because when you're a little kid, like when I was this old, when this came out, I was probably doing stupid Christmas arts and crafts in school and stuff like that. So it just, it really does remind me of being a little kid around Christmas time when I watch this. A little late for Christmas, but still glad to find it anyways, because this is um, kind of a hard to find tape. But Elf's Magical Christmas. And that was the update for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. And thanks for watching.